Hey guys, it's Shelby with Farmhouse Living and welcome back to our channel where we share all things home. We got the baby right here. Mom's gonna watch her. And my friend Maddie is here and she is going to teach us how to paint a piece of furniture. And we are going to use Jolie paint today. So she's going to give us all of her tips. And look how pretty her hair is today. The one time I do my hair, it's beautiful. And I got my do a little. Hair. Wait, let me say welcome back to our channel. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. You should be a YouTuber. I have no channel. She should have a channel though. I just use my friends to be on their channel. I'm going to link her Instagram and follow it and then message her and tell her to have a channel. Please, so. <laughs> please. What we're going to do is we're painting this sofa table with dove gray, which is like a light gray. Um, supposed to be like basically a white with a hint of gray in it. So I will be honest, this is the first time I painted with this color since we're changing paint brands and I'm super stoked. Yeah, I like it because I feel like it looks white but it's warmer and it's kind of gray. Yeah, I definitely see the hints of gray. Okay, so when you open your can, you want to make sure to stir it, shake it, do the whole shebang. I'm just going to put this down there. Um, and then Shelby, I brought you a brush. Okay. And this is the Jolie paint brush and I brought a brush. So what I like to do is we'll start with the top because that's going to take the longest to dry. And you work this way and I work this way and we'll put this in the middle. Okay. And when you're doing your paint, there's no like rhyme or reason. But I am going to show you how to make it really smooth so that the tops look like kind of like you airbrushed it. So first dip your paintbrush in there. Get like a good amount, you know. Don't be scared. There's no divider, so we can really push down on these. And I like to start like in the middle, yeah. Because if you load up your paint and start in the side, you know, you're having to really kind of like work it. And I just go back and forth. You can go up and down. Load my brush again. I don't get scared to get paint on my brush. And the whole point of this is to get it covered. You cannot be OCD. You can't keep working the same area. So once you've got it covered, you want to move on because with chalk paint, what actually happens is it actually takes off the paint. Get more paint on your brush, Shelly. Okay. You're spreading too thin. You want it, the first coat does look really crappy. Um, but that second and sometimes even third coat just looks so much better. It doesn't matter the direction at It all. doesn't matter yet. Okay. Just get it covered and then we're going to smooth out the top to look like it was um, sprayed on. Or what I like to call, I like it to look like pottery barn smooth. It's my own yeah. language there. Yeah, I like the manufactured look more than like it has layers and layers yeah. of paint. Yeah, which you can do that with this paint, you know. Um, that's what's cool is we can make it look like it's been so old in a barn with layers of paint, but we're not doing that for this. Um, okay, so now that we got it covered, I don't know if you want to show them how crappy this looks. Like the, um, yeah. So what I like to do is smooth out the top. So what I do is I start from one end and I just kind of take my brush all the way down. And then I turn my brush, go the other side. Turn my brush. And I do this before it has dried because the end result is really going to look like we dry brushed it, or that we sprayed it. If it's already drying in some spots, it's not going to do this. So you want, that's part of also being fast when you paint. You cannot be OCD in this paint. All right. So now you start on your side okay. and you're going to do the same thing. Anything that there's like a flat surface, you want to smooth it out okay. as well. So you get it covered and then smooth out any flat surfaces. Wait, 
with the the um, hardware, we're just gonna paint right over it. So it's like a this color is like an antique -y brass, which it would could be pretty. That's actually back in, but this isn't the right antique -y brass. So we're just gonna paint over it. So I'm just gonna get my drawer painted first. And then I will work on the hardware. And I'm just like dabbing. The goal is again to get it covered. And then I will smooth out my um, my drawer. Okay. So see how this drawer is covered. Okay, and it's like really, really blotchy, so I'm actually just going to smooth it out like so. And it's not going to look perfect, and that's okay, because the end result, it is going to look perfect. That looks pretty, like... Yeah, it looks awesome. Covered. Nice, but you know what? Sometimes you can't know until it's dry. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. What? Okay, when you're holding your brush, you want it to be comfortable. See how I'm like gripping it really good? A lot of mistakes are like this. Oh yeah. That's gonna hurt your wrist. So you gotta get it like you're you're really comfortable and that you're like writing a writing something. I think I hold my brush awkward. Yeah, make sure you're in a comfortable spot. So we're almost done and look how much paint we have left. I just got this last top. Okay, we need to blow dry. And then sand and wax, and we're done. I believe the best thing that you can use is you could just put your 220 sandpaper on your your um, mouse or whatever it is, your palm sander, and just go, ah, and that's gonna be the best. But we're gonna do hand. How do you do it? Ah, just like that. Okay. But we're gonna do um, hand sanding, and especially if you're new, you want to maybe start off with that so you can kind of get the feel for what it's supposed to touch, like feel like, look and sound. <laughs> Not sound, but you get the idea. Okay, so um, we'll start here. So uh, this is just an old block that I'm using to help me grip it. And this is from my mouse, so it was just 220. So you want to start in, on the edging first, because that's the easiest to kind of sand. So I got that like little random distress mark over there. I'm going to create one just over here. So it's like kind of symmetrical. Not too many, just like on top of the surface, no more than three is really what you want to do, if you do any. Okay. There are no mistakes. Happy accidents. Wasn't there a guy that like chopped his ear off or something like that? Some artist guy? Who's that guy? Picasso. Picasso. I'm like Picasso. You know? This Picasso. Be a famous distress mark. Picasso and um, Bob Ross are very different. Are they though? Artists, yeah. yeah Both painters. So I'm just rubbing it on. And I'm just doing like one little square section. Again, you could be super rough with these. I get like a good amount on my hand because if you get like one little thing, you know, I get like a really good amount of, on my hand and then I just rub it on and I wipe it off and then I turn my rag. And you can see like the color does change a little bit and you can see where you haven't waxed and where you have. Keep going. That means you haven't rubbed all the wax off. Like I could tell over here it was still kind of blotchy.
Waxing is the easiest as long as you know what you're doing. A lot of people do waxing wrong because they put too much wax on. And the reason I love waxing is because it's so much easier to fix versus if you did a poly, that a poly sits on top of the, of the, the paint, but a wax soaks into the wood. So it's easier if something were to happen to fix it. Just grab your wax, rub it on there, voila. Versus a poly, you would have to sand it down, then paint it, then sand it, then poly it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jolie did come out with a new varnish um, that we plan on using both me and you on our kitchen. Yes. Okay, so excited. we will be doing videos on how to paint kitchen cabinets. Yours are already painted with... They're black and it's an oil-based Enamel? Paint. Yes. And then mine, we renovated our kitchen. Half or one little part of it is like from the old cabinet, so it has all that varnish on it. Um, and then the rest of it is raw wood. So you'll get to see all three. Yeah. How easy it is. In the front, or I'm sure you'll want to get some B-roll in the front, but after we get, get one B-roll shot, you can come in. As I rub, you can wipe. Oh. It's an exercise. Yeah, dude. It's on the wrong hand. <laughs> you can also buff this stuff. Like if you wanted it to be really shiny when you were sanding, you would have done 220 and then higher grit 320. And I think it goes all the way up. You could do 500 even. Um, and then when you're waxing, they, they recommend the next day. The next day you could take a rag and just rub, rub, rub the heck out of it and it'll give it some sheen if you don't want it so flat. But I even see sheen right now, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to catch that on the camera. Yeah, on the camera. I like it matte though. Yeah, matte furniture just looks like, to me, way more expensive, um, custom. I'm all about something looking custom versus like Hobby Lobby or what everybody else has, you know? Even though we call it the Pottery Barn Smooth or the Pottery Barn Look, it still looks very custom. While I was editing this video, I found that the very end had no sound. So I'm gonna try to close it out myself, but luckily Maddie's tips were nothing te technical at the end. It was really just to do it. Don't be afraid to refinish a piece of furniture, bring it back to life and love it again. So whether it's an estate cell find or just a piece that you have laying around, the Jolie paint really is. It's an awesome product super easy and makes a huge impact in a space. And like we said, we are actually gonna use them on my cabinets and Maddie's cabinets. So we are going to have any even more tips using the product. So make sure that you ask any questions that you have pertaining to either the cabinets or just painting a piece of furniture. Maddie can share with her seven years of experience all of her tips and tricks in the comments below, so take her up on that. And if you're looking for a place to support during this time, um, I know a lot of us are really trying to be uh, cheerleaders of small business, the Rustic Warehouse is a great place to support. Maddie has worked her bohiney off getting all this paint and all their products up on their website while we are staying at home. And so uh, you can shop Jolie Paint on the Rustic Warehouse um, on the Rustic Warehouse's website, and I just can't think of a better crew to support than Maddie and Al and the whole Rustic Warehouse team. So you can buy paint, accessories, and if you're local, you can even buy big pieces, so tables, all sorts of furniture. So 
just let me know if you have any questions. I hope that you have fun DIYing and taking on any projects while you're at home and, and just enjoy your home and enjoy your family. Have a great day, guys. Bye.